Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha, I'm Emily Casey from Kalaheo High School in Windward, Oahu. And I'm Riley Wachtala from Eva Makai Middle School in Eva, Oahu. Welcome to the special Fall Challenge edition of Hiki no. In mid-September of this year, Emily and I were among the many Hikino students who participated in the 2017 Hikino Fall Challenge. And boy, was it ever a challenge. The five high schools and nine middle schools who entered the competition were given exactly four days to complete a Hikino story based on the theme that was not revealed to them until the start of the four-day sprint. No one could get a head start in creating their story because no one knew the theme ahead of time. And that theme was, what is it like to walk in another person's shoes? This prompt proved to be very challenging and the resulting stories ran the gamut of how one might express the theme. The time restrictions made this competition especially difficult. Students are usually given about two months to create a Hiki no story and they are guided by their teachers and mentors every step of the way. In this case, no teachers or any adults for that matter were allowed to provide hands-on support. The student teams had to rely on their own skills to conceptualize, pre-produce, shoot, write, and edit their stories within the four days. The results were nothing short of amazing. To prove it, we'll be showing you the best stories that came out of the Fall 2017 Hikino Challenge, as selected by the Hikino Editorial Board. We'll also show you the winning stories in the middle school and high school divisions of this competition, each of which will receive $500 in video production equipment for use in their media programs. So let's take a look at the top 2017 Hiki no Fall Challenge stories and see how they interpreted the theme, To Walk in Another Person's Shoes. Our first story gives us a sense of what it's like to walk in the shoes of a young person who is transitioning to a new gender. From Maui High School in Kahului, here is Kylie. Kyle is now dead. Now it's Kylie. Kylie, did you complete your assignment? Yeah, great. Um, to me, Transgender is changing into something you are, but you didn't realize it until you changed. Maui High School junior varsity cheerleader Kylie Valdez started her transition soon after entering high school. I realized this when I was in the ninth grade. I wanted to wear girl clothes for like no reason. Cause then when I was younger, I hated the clothes that I wore. Although dressing as a male proved difficult for her, Kylie had to face another challenge, her mother's acceptance. I had to wake up early in the morning to like change so they don't wake up and see me, because then they would stop me and like say, change into your boy clothes and stuff. So my sister and my mom didn't accept it because they wanted me to be something I didn't want to be. They always bought me, like, boy clothes. And then this one, uh, the, 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 the conflict wasn't only about clothes. Kylie was also searching for support. Don't wear makeup, don't wear dress yet. While overcoming her emotional void, Kylie explains, I felt so irritated and mad because I wanted, I wanted them to love me for who I am. But then I would... I didn't tell them or confront them because I knew they wouldn't like, they wouldn't care. Kylie decided to confront her mother. A big part of this understanding is using the correct vocabulary and name. She uses the right pronouns, but sometimes she forgets, she forgets to call me Kylie. But like, it's like a sign that she's showing acceptance. Now, free to dress however she wants, Kylie can finally step away from her past. Kyle, the old me, who was bullied and who didn't know who he was, now walked into Kylie's shoes, who is me, and no one can ever change that. This is Christina Alonzo from Maui High School for Hiki no. Our next fall challenge story shows how the ability to walk in another person's shoes can come in handy if you're tasked with getting a group of individuals to collaborate harmoniously. Here is BAM President 
from Kapa'a High School on Kauai. And I mean, there will be days, days, not like an hour, days of like hard work and just people yelling at you. And that's, that's just how you grow is through hard work. The highest skill set as a musician is only a small part of what is needed to become band president at Kapa'a High School. When they're learning music, because I'm a fourth year, it's kind of like inferred that I um, help them. And I'm like, I guess you could say a teacher. It works in a way that their success is my success. He stands as the exemplar or the example of what it is to be the ideal band student. He's very calm and he's very patient and he explains things, he can explain things in multiple ways. Leading by example, Levi's support, dedication, and compassion unites and guides the band. I've learned is the best is to just be you and having a positive attitude with them, you know, showing them being like a role model without actually saying it or trying to. If I'm having trouble, playing a part, he walks me through it step by step. He doesn't really talk a whole lot because it's much easier to follow someone that does the right thing than someone that says what the right thing should be. Levi's optimism motivates his peers to become stronger in both character and performance. Like I really like the, the phrase that like a smile can brighten anyone's day. He kind of just encouraged us saying, you guys can do it, um, he believes in us, he's really inspirational to me. Being liked and being in charge requires his mindful balance of accuracy and friendship. In this band program, no one wants to be president. It's not easy and it's a very, it's a very unpopular position to be with your peers. Um, I'm responsible for them, so whatever they do, I have to make sure that they are doing what's right. If I tell them a lot, they get irritated, and there's like a love-hate relationship. With graduation in sight, Levi aspires to leave a lasting impression. To know that someone else recognized what you've done, come into band, or when they do what you have done, when they've walked in your footsteps, it would inspire them to pay it forward. A, good deed. a continuous note of kindness resonates loud and proud throughout the band. This is Jessica Stark from Kapa'a High School for Hikino. It's difficult to understand what sufferers of chronic pain go through, but empathy from others can be critical to the successful treatment of those in pain. Students from Wainai High School on Oahu show us why it's important for us to walk in the shoes of people with fibromyalgia. This story hit particularly close to home for its reporter because the patient it features is also her mother. I think they would cry if they had to live day in my shoes. Every morning, Angel Marquez has just a little bit more to deal with than her alarm clock. I wake up in the morning in pain um, throughout my body. So it's like the worst in the morning time and I have to take my medication so I can get my body to warm up, my muscles to warm up. It takes control sometimes of the day. At the beginning, one to 10, it was a nine to me. I felt like somebody was used like a potato peeler and peeled my back. It was burning, stinging, it was on fire. But that was my worst, or I couldn't even take care of my kids and my handicapped husband. You know what, I just wanna go back to bed. Although the pain felt very real for Angel and her family, it didn't seem real enough for her doctors. Like doctors dismiss me because they're like, well, you have fibromyalgia. So it's like, okay, you, get, you know, just get over it or deal with it. Fibromyalgia is a rare disease affecting three to 6% of the world. It causes widespread pain, making simple daily activities very difficult. With no known cause or cure, Fibromyalgia victims suffer silently on a day-to-day -day basis. You know what, I have to deal with this disease, and on top of that, I have to deal with people not believing me that it's real. Doctors are not the only people Angel has received a lack of empathy from. Well, it's an invisible disease, so they don't see that. Like, if somebody has a handicap and they're in a wheelchair, obviously, you know, that person has a handicap. 
but mine is invisible. They can't see it. So they're like, well, you look fine. You know, what's wrong with you, you know? Despite the lack of visibility, you would see the problem clearly through her eyes. Some people might see her as just a weak person because she can't physically do everything she needs to, but she's the strongest person I know. I try to be an optimistic person with this. Generally, I try to be a happy person around, right? I mean, I, I do. Because I'm, I'm grateful for every day that I wake up. Even though I have to live with this, I, I'm still happy for what I have, and I, it could be worse. But it can only get better through awareness. Yeah, I mean, I would like people to just be aware of this disease and that how it affects the person and their loved ones. It's, uh, it, it, it demands a lot from them physically and it uh, takes a toll on them. So I, I wish people would educate themselves with fibromyalgia. You know, be grateful for your health. Do the things you want to do now while you're healthy while you can still do those things. This is Melina Marquez from Waianae High School, Fort Hiki No. Lucky You Live Hawaii is a phrase familiar to all of us who reside in the islands. But to truly appreciate how good we have it, try walking in the shoes of a person who has moved here for a better life. In this next story, students from Kamehameha School's Maui Middle help us do just that. If you want to take that ball out, what's going to happen if you're with the ball in the box and you dribble it out, what's going to happen? My name is Matthew Mazalski. I'm an electrician and I'm a soccer coach. Soccer coach Mazowski recently moved to Maui to start a new life. So I moved to Maui um, to be with the woman I love, who I'm now married to. Uh, my day generally consists of waking up around 5.30 a.m. Um, I head to work around 6.30. Um, I, I work all day as an electrician and then I finish 3.30 and then I head up country, drive up country as fast as I can and then I, I coach soccer for two hours from four till six from there finally go home and have a nice dinner. Although Mr. Mazowski seems very happy, he has gone through his set of difficulties. Um, so in England, uh, it was really tough. Um, I was waking up at, at five o'clock in the morning. It was dark, it was cold, it was wet. Um, and I put on like five layers of clothes and I went to work. People were miserable at work. Um, there was no joy in my life really. There came a time where Mr. Mazowski's life hit rock bottom. I was not happy in, in myself and um, I, I was struggling. I was struggling and then I, um, I, did, I had to think and I sat for a very, very long time on my own about what, what would make me happy and teaching and, and soccer would, would make me happy. Through these struggles, Mr. Mazowski turned to the one thing he knew best. Look at the space in behind. Oh, well, soccer, like I say, it's been part of my life since I was two years old. Um, it's basically taught me everything that I know, um, from being an individual and learning to be confident in myself and, and respect myself and, um, you know, really, and, it, and also engage with others and work as part of a team and it's realising it's not all about me, it's about everybody. And I went to university and, it, and teaching soccer actually completely changed my life and then Eventually, it, um, it brought me to America and Hawaii and Maui and, and then I met my wife through it. So ever since I changed my life uh, in that way, it, it's brought me nothing but good fortune. Work away, work away, go! Mr. Mazowski has advice for anyone who wants to get a kick out of life. So what I will say is it's important to be passionate about what you do every day. You know, you need to wake up every day and, and, and have something that you, you need, you know, that you want in life, that you want to achieve. And finding, finding your passion in life is, is massive. Looking through someone else's eyes can reveal something you never would have imagined. And looking at Hawaii through Mr. Mazowski's eyes can teach us a lot about this place we call home. This is Mackenzie Ventura from Kamehameha School's Maui Middle School for Hiki no. Teen suicide is a tragic, ever-growing problem here in Hawaii. It is difficult to know what it's like to walk in the shoes of young people who are contemplating taking their own lives. But as students from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai imply in this next story, empathy and understanding might be the most effective weapons against suicide. 12.8% of all of Hawaii's high school students, based on a test that they took, a survey they took, have reported that they've either thought about suicide or they've attempted suicide. 
That has put us first in the nation for having our teens most at risk for ending their life by suicide. You know, a lot of people have this, I'm tough, or guys especially, you know. Those are the ones that you really got to watch out for because when they reach that point, they won't know what to do. And to them, that might be their solution because that's the only way they think that their pain will end. She was a closed off person, didn't say much. And I feel like if she opened up her feelings and told us how she really felt before she did this, I think things would change. We're not in their shoes. We don't know what they're going through too because they could seem happy on the outside, but that is just for show sometimes, just to, you know, make your other family members feel happy. But deep down, they're probably suffering a lot. Even though the suicide death toll is rising, there are ways to stop it, like keeping a watchful eye on our community for signs. For somebody at risk can be pretty easy to recognize. They can be talking about suicide, first of all. They could say things, as I'd mentioned before, I'm thinking about ending it, I want to kill myself, I don't want to live anymore. Um, it could be a little bit more subtle, like um, nobody would miss me if I wasn't here. However, some people can hide these signs very well. He was just a happy person. And we saw him two nights before, and because we were, we were at the carnival and we were having fun, he was playing with the kids. but. I never seen anything like this coming. Suicide can be prevented. You can make a difference just by doing or saying something very little. Even if it's a stranger, they look sad, just say hi. You, you might not have to say anything else, just by you saying hi might make a difference. Because they're gonna be like, wow, they noticed me. Suicide is a topic that shouldn't be taken lightly. To help each other, we may need to step into someone else's shoes to understand what they might be going through. If you or a loved one is at risk of suicide, talk about it and know you're loved by many people in your life. And if all else fails, call the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. This is Shane Chibuya from Chief Iskamaka Hill in Middle School for Hiki No. Our next story is perhaps the show's most literal interpretation of walking in another person's shoes. But in telling this story, students at Maui Waina Intermediate School discovered an entrepreneur who truly has empathy for her customers. My name is Terry Edmonds, and I am primarily known as the Shoe Lady. Terry Edmonds is a cobbler, which is fitting as she owns a shoe store in downtown Wailuku, Maui called If the Shoe Fits. My inspiration for making shoes came from one primary event, and that was my shoe store. I was known for women with big feet. A girl came in, she was age 16, size 16 foot. If you've never seen, it's, it's big. And she uh, was looking for a prom shoe, and we couldn't find anything. They didn't make anything, of course. And so when I said, I just can't help you, I'm sorry, and she dropped her backpack, sat down on the couch, and started to cry. This emotional experience inspired her to take the leap and become a cobbler. The fun thing is now I can make them for any foot, any shape, from scratch. Terry's sole purpose is to help people so they too can walk in her shoes. I had a girl that came in with an amputated foot. Um, I get a lot of customers who are referred by doctors or let's say a diabetic, and they've got such tender feet, they can't have anything touching their feet. Or let's say somebody with elephantitis, their leg looks like an elephant leg and it goes straight down. And to try to make a shoe that stays on that, let alone make it cute or let that person feel good about themselves in it. So that's pretty moving and purposeful, and that's what I love. And I realize those are the people that are out there that are overlooked. You know, you don't understand what they're going through, and so that gives me meaning and purpose. Thank you. Yeah. It's really easy to be able to kind of walk in another person's shoes after you hear their story or you share a hug or a tear or something with them. You just do that. It's a real blessing. This is Hannah Okamoto from Iwana Intermediate School for Hiki No. Now, 
It is my pleasure to present the winning story in the high school division of the 2017 Fall Challenge. This story was singled out by the Hikino Editorial Board as a high school story that most successfully portrayed the theme, Walking in Another Person's Shoes. I'm also proud to announce that my co-host was part of the Kala Hale High School team that produced the story. Congratulations, Emily. Thank you, Riley. This is indeed an honor for me, my Fall Challenge teammates at Kala Hale, and our teacher, Ms. Kathy Shigimura. Here is Hurricane Harvey Relief from Kala Hale High School in Windward, Oahu and then we're going to put it all together and send it over to Houston. Okay. Yeah. From September 15th to the 17th of 2017, the YMCA of Honolulu hosted the Kokua Houston's Keiki Donation Drive to help the victims of Hurricane Harvey in partnership with Pesha Hawaii and Hawaii Stevedores Incorporated. Harvey made landfall in Houston in August of 2017, receiving more than 16 inches of rain in one day causing flooding and severe damage to the area. According to Britannica, this was the strongest storm to hit the United States in over a decade. In response to this natural disaster, the YMCA of Honolulu called upon the people of Hawaii for donations for Houston's keiki. Games are really great, board games, um, toys, and these are action figures. What's really good for these kids is also building blocks like Lego, that's really great for their hand-eye coordination and also STEM crafts. We're also looking for book supplies for both students and as well as teachers. Pesha Hawaii and the Hawaii Stevedores donated a 40-foot container that can be shipped across the ocean and driven to the heart of the community in Houston. The YMCA's goal was to collect donations and supply the keiki in the city with all the things they need to grow, learn, and thrive. You know, we had these um, children who actually came yesterday and it was so heartfelt because they took it from their point of view and they said, you know what, we want to donate books, Dr. Seuss books, because those are our favorite and that's what we want to give to the kids. Many donors use this mentality to decide what to give the keiki in Houston. Uh, for them, you just have to put in their shoes for a moment, close your eyes and think, uh, if I forgot my, my bag at home, what would I need now? So it will take you to uh, the moment that you might need something, something you know that you take it for granted on an everyday basis. Even though the islands of Hawaii are approximately 3,800 miles away from Houston, organizers consider all YMCAs to be a family. And I look at our island, and we've had a number of near misses for hurricanes. And I know that if, and we hope it never happens, but if we should be hit, I know that all the other YMCA's across the country would unite and would help us just as we are helping them, because that's just what we do. No matter where we are, whether it's Honolulu or Houston, a little compassion and a lot of aloha can go a long way. This is Emily Casey from Kalaheo High School for Hiki No. And now, the middle school story selected by the Hiki No editorial board as most successfully portraying the walking in another person's shoes theme comes from Eva Makai Middle School on Oahu. My co-host Riley was on that team. Congratulations, Riley, to you and your teammates for an awesome job. Thank you, Emily. This is indeed an honor for me, my teammates, and our teacher, Ethan Toyota. Here is Lolita by the 2017 Hiki No Fall Challenge team at Eva Mackay Middle on Oahu. It really feels like I was made for this and that there was nothing else that I was supposed to do but be this person. Mark Joseph Agpun Danong is an up-and-coming drag queen from Waianae. His stage name is Lolita and drag is his passion. Mark hopes that by being brave and putting himself out there, he is inspiring others who haven't been able to do so themselves, either out of fear or lack of support from family and friends. So Lolita is actually my grandmother's name. I was literally in the field, like, and I was thinking, oh my God, when I start drag, like, well, what do I want my name to be? And so when I was in that field, I was like, oh my God, I feel just like my grandmother. Like for once, I felt like I was connected to my grandmother who I can't speak to. So I was like, and what's her name? I was like, her name's Lolita. I'm Lolita too. Although he only started a year ago, Mark knows he has found his calling. As a drag queen, he gets to feel beautiful and glamorous when he may not feel that way in everyday life. 
In addition, drag allows Mark to socialize with many different types of people and entertain them, which brings Mark joy because he knows he is making people happy. There has just always been a part of me that loved looking pretty and feeling pretty and kind of giving that essence of a woman. When I was younger, I didn't know what my life would be like because I was queer and because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I really didn't think that I would even make it to, I'm gonna turn 23 years old. I didn't think I would make it to 23 years old because the future looked bleak. I was like, if I don't know who I am, like, then what's the point of living? Um, and that sounds really dramatic to say, but when I found drag, it kind of, it brought me closer to my religion. It brought me closer to my family. It made me more open. It made me love myself more. You know, gave me a second shot at life. Because it's like, well, even if I don't like who I am outside of drag, you know, I can, I have the power to look any way that I want to and be exactly the person that I am to. When I get to be Lolita, I feel like my best self. I feel like I'm living my best life, you know? When Mark walks in Lolita's shoes, he feels like the best version of himself. By being Lolita, he feels like he is free to express himself and be true to his heart. All Mark wants to do in life is to be his true self and for others to experience the same happiness he does when in drag. Just take your time. Life really does get better. I'm still really young and I'm still lost sometimes, but it's okay to be who you are. If you, you're you scared and you don't know who you are, that's fine, take your time. Life does get better. And there's more out there for us than just, you know, bad things. There are good things, beautiful things, and you can be a beautiful person. Life is not fun when you don't get to be who you really want to be. This is Ayana Sabuko from FMKI Middle School for Hikino. Thank you for joining us on this special 2017 Fall Challenge edition of Hikino. We hope you've enjoyed watching these diverse expressions of the theme, walking in another person's shoes, as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. It's amazing to think that each of these stories was created inside the pressure cooker of a four-day production schedule. Proof positive that Hawaii students, hiki no, can do. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.